everyone, how's it going? So we did Moltres, we did Articuno. Today, we're going to see how fast Zapdos can complete red and blue. Now, Zapdos is fairly interesting because it starts off with arguably the best flying move in the entire game, Drill Peck. That gets paired with a basic electric attack, Thundershock, which as you can see in the rival battle, does a good enough job at this point in the game. However, neither of these moves are particularly useful against Brock, and like with Moltres, Brock is going to be a problem. In fact, we could expect Brock to be an even bigger problem, because at least Moltres had a special move that if you outsped, theoretically wouldn't allow either of Brock's Pokémon to attack. With Zapdos, since it doesn't learn any more moves until after level 50, we're stuck with the physical attacking move Drill Peck, and that means Brock's Pokémon can take advantage of their super high defense. So, I'm sure you're wondering, how high a level do you need to be at in order to beat Brock's Pokémon? Are we going to have to level up a whole bunch? The answer is yes, but there is a way to make that not waste a ton of time. You see, because we have Drill Peck, we can defeat the two extra bug catchers as well as the final bug catcher we always need to defeat in Viridian Forest. And while Sand Shrew can be annoying with Sand Attack, the Junior Trainer is also a useful source of experience points. If you do all that, you'll be at level 9, but you'll actually be only 39 experience points away from level 10. So, it makes sense just to knock out a single Metapod or a few Caterpie as you're walking in Viridian Forest so you'd be able to hit level 10, and then you actually could battle Brock, in theory. Because although I use a Game Shark to change my starter into Zapdos, that is the only cheat or glitch or anything like that I'll use in this run. So the way I make sure that my starter is good, in other words, making sure its underlying stats are as good as possible, is by first checking a DV calculator. So seeing the different ranges that each of its stats can be, and then I'll check the starter I get and reset. I'm obviously not showing footage because this process can actually take upwards of half an hour. Heck, I've spent over an hour resetting to get the stats I want. And suffice to say, it is an extremely tedious process. And of course, never are you going to get all stats being perfect. That's like a one in over 60,000 chance. So what I tend to do is look for one or two stats that I'd like to be as good as possible. So in this case, I wanted a special stat of 19 since that's guaranteed to be as good as possible and an attack stat of 15 because even at its worst, it's still above average. Unfortunately, in prioritizing those two, I ended up getting below average speed and that's incredibly relevant to this battle with Brock because if I had just slightly better speed DVs, then I would be able to outspeed Brock at level 10. His Onyx, which uses Bide and thus it's very important to outspeed, it has 26 speed, so I need at least 27. Unfortunately, I tie him with 26. And so I really had two options. Do I try to do the run over and reset for a better Zapdos? Already the Zapdos I got is only a 2% chance probability. Or do I just say, you know what? They're never going to be perfect and level up one more time. I mean, I could try to chance it and battle Brock at a speed tie. But as we see this battle with Onyx, it's just too unpredictable. I never know when I'm going to go first or not. And when it comes to Bide, it's incredibly important to be able to know when Bide is coming so that I can avoid taking back twice the damage, which definitely adds up. Plus, Brock can use Screech and Tackle. It just wasn't a realistic strategy. Of course, theoretically possible, but the likelihood of me beating Brock, even if I outspeed him, was already not looking great which is why I opted simply to level up once more. Now, in watching back this footage, I actually probably should have battled rival 1A, the rival on Route 22, which I always skip. He has a flying and water Pokemon, and I probably could have beaten him easily, and that would have given me enough experience points to avoid going back into the forest and just knocking out a few Metapod or Caterpie. But by the time I realized I needed to level up, I was already in Pewter, and it would have been very slow to go back through Viridian to battle him. So knocking out Metapod and Caterpie I did, and I gained just enough experience points so that after I knock out Brock's Geodude, Zapdos will level up to level 11 and thus outspeed Onix. However, I still need to rely on Drill Peck, so can I even do this at level 11? Well, it depends on luck, because Zapdos does have the best speed of the three legendary birds. And that's great because critical hits are dependent on your base speed, 
and we need critical hits. In this Brock battle, they're always useful, but especially against Geodude, when it uses Defense Curl, we're gonna do next to no damage, and we wanna have as much HP as possible for Onyx, because Onyx is also gonna require quite a bit of luck, depending on whether it uses Screech and Tackle, or whether it just keeps using Bide, which frankly is the best case scenario. In this battle, I do get a few critical hits, and I'm able to knock out Geodude with 26 HP, and then I level up, so it becomes 29 HP. That's not bad. Now, the battle versus Onyx is quite long, and I don't want to do a play-by-play -play because that would take forever, but essentially you will notice that it missed a Screech. That's very important. And basically, you're seeing that I'm using Drill Peck, switching to Thundershock when Onyx uses Bide, and hoping it doesn't use Screech and Tackle too much. Critical hits are obviously key. We do only have 20 power points, and if those run out, we lose the battle. But thankfully, the battle is winnable, albeit at a much higher level than Articuno or Moltres. But in terms of time comparison, I always save as I enter Mount Moon. Articuno was obviously fastest at 22 minutes, followed by Moltres at 28 minutes. But Zapdos, even with all those extra battles, is actually only 2 minutes higher, 30 minutes, and only 10 minutes higher than Mewtwo. Why is that? Well, here is where Drill Peck comes in handy, and frankly, so does Thundershock. Articuno's biggest advantage was the ability to use Ice Beam, which is a 90 base power attack, way earlier than you're supposed to have attacks that powerful. Moltres had to rely on a multi-turn attack, which is incredibly slow, or Peck. Zapdos gets to rely on Drill Peck, so the fact that we're only two minutes back of Moltres after defeating Brock is actually a really, really good sign for Zapdos because unlike Articuno and Moltres, which struggle with Misty, Zapdos actually has a super effective attack. So unlike in the previous two runs, we actually are going to battle Misty first. And the Misty battle goes pretty fast as well, although I wouldn't call it easy per se. Staryu is never a problem in these battles. I start off with Drill Peck. I'm not actually sure which will do more damage because these Pokemon have higher special than defense. It's going to be a 2 hit KO anyway. Staryu uses Water Gun, does 8 HP, and I knock it out with Thundershock. But against Starmie, I really shouldn't have used Drill Peck because of exactly what just happened. Misty uses an X defense, so of course now Thundershock is the better attack. Drill Peck does, I don't know, about a sixth or so. It thankfully goes for Tackle, which does next to nothing. Thundershock is doing about a third, so I think I'll knock it out next turn. It goes for Tackle again. I go for Thundershock. I was wrong. It still has a little bit of health left. Just no critical hit Bubble Beam and I should win. Well, Starmie does get a critical hit, but with Tackle, Starmie was definitely pretty cooperative in this battle, and it's unfortunate we couldn't use Thunderbolt. But hey, first try victories are first try victories, and being able to defeat Misty early, especially compared to Moltres, is very beneficial since it's less backtracking. Now, we obviously have to battle rival number two, and his team isn't very good against Zapdos. Now I go for Thundershock against Pidgeotto and I get a critical hit. I think that did matter, which is good because I really don't want Sand Attack. And everything else should be a 1-hit KO. Abra is a 1-hit KO with Drill Peck. Critical hit clearly didn't matter. Rattata is a 1-hit KO with Drill Peck. No critical hit there. I do get a critical hit on the Squirtle, but I think that would have been a 1-hit KO regardless. And yeah, that's rival number two. Typically a difficult battle, but not with Zapdos. And in case you felt that battle went too quickly, we get a very similar battle after we finish up and get the SS ticket. We head down to Vermilion, onto the SSN, and we get to battle rival number three. We're gonna use the same strategy. Thundershock probably would have been a one hit KO against the other Pidgeotto since it was a one hit KO here without a critical hit. Drill Pick is still a one hit KO against Raticate. I do outspeed the Kadabra and knock it out with Drill Peck. Again, one hit KO. And finally, we have a Pokemon that's not a one hit KO, although I think it is a range. Thundershock just missed knocking out Wartortle, and I just knock it out easily the next turn. That is rival number three. You may have noticed I have Thunder Wave. The TM for Thunder Wave is available on Route 24. I always skip it, but even though I didn't necessarily see a use for it, I figured I'm not going to learn any moves to level 50 anyway. Might as well teach it. But I should clarify I meant level up moves because there is a very useful TM that we can get so long as we can defeat Lieutenant Surge, and that is obviously TM24, Thunderbolt. And this is definitely an interesting matchup because it's the first time Lieutenant Surge's Pokemon aren't going to be super effective against me. However, both my attacking moves are going to be resisted by Surge's Pokemon. 
So I'm not sure how this battle is going to go. I'm hoping I can beat him here and don't have to come back, but I guess we'll see. So I outspeed Voltorb, lead off with Drill Peck. It's doing around half, just under. Lieutenant Surge uses the next speed. Voltorb now outspeeds and goes for Tackle, thankfully not Sonic Boom. I go for Drill Peck, get a critical hit. I think that did matter, and I knock out Voltorb. Now this actually surprised me. Drill Pick is a one-hit KO with Pikachu. I know Pikachu doesn't have the greatest defense. Still didn't expect a one-hit KO, but pretty good. Now I'd like no Thunderbolts from Raichu. Well, I get a critical hit Drill Peck turn one and an X speed. So that's about as good as I could have hoped for. I then get hit with Thundershock, which does around 11. So Thunderbolt probably would have done around 30. I say probably because I get another critical hit with Drill Peck. 20% chance, but still two in a row is kind of unlikely. And yeah, that's the battle. Sometimes I reset if I get luck that's too good, but honestly, Zapdos seemed to be pretty decent against Lieutenant Surge, and this run is going super, super well. I've been able to stick to minimum battles once I've defeated Brock, and we're making up a ton of time. And I really didn't think Zapdos would be able to keep up with Moltres, let alone potentially pass it. So I'm really excited about how this run is going so far. After defeating Lieutenant Surge, usually there's nothing to worry about, but with some Pokemon, especially electric Pokemon, there is the hiker in Rock Tunnel, the one with two Geodudes and one Graveler. Now, of course, I still don't have any different moves. I'm gonna have to rely on Drill Peck. I use it, it's doing about a third, but the big issue is they use Self-Destruct. It does about 33 damage, so if all three are to use Self-Destruct, I will lose. And to be honest, I think even if the next Geodude doesn't and Graveler does, I might still lose. But hey, let's see if we can get through Geodude 2 first. I go for Drill Peck. It goes for Tackle. That's good. Another Drill Peck. Crit would be nice. No crit. Tackle is very good. I knock it out with the next Drill Peck. So I'm at 47 HP. And yeah, I basically need this not to self-destruct. And it's probably going to take more than three Drill Pecks, considering Graveler has much better defense. So once again, I go for Drill Peck. It's doing about a quarter, which is nice. It goes for Tackle. I also should mention, these guys know Rock Throw, and even though it's only 60% accurate, that would do a ton of damage as well. Another Drill Peck, another Tackle. That's very good. And I hadn't gotten one yet, but I finally do get a critical hit, which honestly is about average luck. And I'm able to defeat this Hiker on my first try. Trust me, had I lost, I would have shown you those battles, but didn't happen. Easily could have. There's not much more I can do here. But again, this run is going pretty well so far. And just to remind you, as I head to Celadon, I do have a route that I find fastest for these runs. And I will remind you, I don't use the Polkadot glitch to bypass Marowak. So I do need the Sylph Scope, meaning I need to go to the Rocket Game Corner. So I'm going to heal in the Pokemon Center, go to the Game Corner, Battle Giovanni, which I'm not looking forward to, and I'll show off in just a second. Then I'm going to do the shopping I need to do, including the fresh water. Pick up the HM for Fly, which I'm not going to teach to Zapdos since it has Drill Peck, and that's objectively a better move. Then I'm going to go to Lavender Tower, and finally, Erica. So let's do it. So I make it through the Rocket Game Corner, which obviously isn't too difficult, but Giovanni has two Rock and Ground Pokemon. Not the best case scenario for me. So Giovanni leads off with Onix. I get a critical hit and it does like a third of damage, which is awesome. Giovanni goes for Rock Throw and he misses, like I said, only 60% accuracy, which is very fortuitous. Another Drill Peck, no critical hit, another Rock Throw, another miss. Another Drill Peck, and this time Rock Throw does connect, but it doesn't do too, too much damage. Onix has pretty bad attack. And finally, my fourth Drill Peck knocks out Onix. So against Rhyhorn, obviously we're going to use Drill Peck again. I'd say that's a 5-hit KO, and it gets a critical hit with Horn Attack. Great. Of course, I can't get a critical hit with Drill Peck, but he can get another critical hit with Horn Attack. Now it's actually getting kind of scary. Finally, I do get a critical hit against Rhyhorn, but it just misses knocking it out. It hits with Horn Attack once again. I don't have very much HP left. That critical hit really mattered, so I knock out Rhyhorn. And I don't know if 28 HP is going to be enough for Kangaskhan. Well, you do get to see me use Thunderbolt for the first time. And whoa, that almost knocks out Kangaskhan. And Giovanni goes for guard spec. That's the AI I come to expect from Giovanni. So I can knock out Kangaskhan the next turn. And that was definitely more eventful than this battle usually is. But electric Pokemon are going to struggle against different types of trainers. That's why I find these runs so much fun. Every Pokemon, no matter how similar you think it is to others, each run seems to take a very unique path, and I find that a ton of fun. 
Speaking of which, after doing the shopping and getting Fly, I can fly to Lavender Town and do a fun battle versus Rival 4, who never is very much of an issue. Obviously, Thunderbolt will be a one-hit KO against Pidgeotto. It also one-hit KOs Growlithe. Drill Peck one-hit KOs Execute, albeit with a critical hit. Not sure if that mattered. Kadabra is terrible defense, so I go for another Drill Peck, another one-hit KO. And five one-hit KOs against Rival number four. Not bad whatsoever. The rest of Pokemon Tower is just as easy as this part was. So we can wrap up what I consider to be the first half of the run by going to Celadon and battling Erika. All the legendary birds have a pretty easy time, but in this battle, we're going to have to use a physical attack as opposed to a special attack. Is that going to make much of a difference? Well, it's not like I'm overleveled or anything, but Drill Peck does 1-8 -E KO Victory Bell without a critical hit. Tangela has good defense, but Drill Peck still knocks it out. And I'm not sure if the critical hit mattered or not, but three wanted KOs, these battles are going very, very quickly. And that's so important in these runs. Not just that we stick to minimum battles, because battles take time, but that the battles we have are as quick as they possibly can be. And definitely in that regard, Zapdos has a huge advantage by getting Drill Peck and Thunderbolt at this point in the game, since there's so many wanted KOs, and no two-turn attacks. And now the question I have to ponder is whether I try to go for the risky strat after getting Surf from Fuchsia. Do I try to do Sylph Company first, which is the faster strat? But if I'm wrong, it could waste a little bit of time in backtracking. Or do I do the safe play and go battle Koga? Shouldn't be too much of a problem with Thunderbolt, although I'm not exactly sure. Hmm, decisions, decisions. Well, since this run is going so good, I'm not going to risk having to go back and forth since I'd save in front of Rival Fievel and then have to leave Sylph Company if it didn't work out. I'm just going to stay within Fuchsia and battle Koga. Now this is a weird battle for multiple reasons. The first thing you should know is this isn't the first battle. I did win the first time, but then I forgot to save and I reset, so I had to battle Koga again. I ended up beating him three different times and I'm going to be showing you the final one. What's important to note is that in the previous battle, one of the Drowsies really didn't cooperate and poisoned me. Now, I could just go out and heal. Unfortunately, you can't dig out of this gym, but I knew it'd be possible to beat him without healing, which it was. I've done it twice, and it does save time. You can actually do this whole battle without taking any damage. It just really depends on what Koga does. And there's also luck involved on my end. The first Thunderbolt to knock out the coughing is a range. I think it's a 1 in 16 chance based on our current stats. And I get that here. Koga can also use an X attack. You just don't want Sludge or something like that because you don't have a ton of HP to spare. Muck is a two-hit KO. Of course, a critical hit would make it a one-hit KO. And I use Thunderbolt. It goes for X attack. Perfect. Muck doesn't attack me. Knock it out with Thunderbolt. Now, this coughing is also a range, but I get the critical hit. And now we just have Weezing which is going to be a multiple KO, and if it uses self-destruct, we're done. Well, I use Thunderbolt, and by multiple hit, I mean at least three if I don't get a critical hit. I get the Paralysis, which is nice. It goes for Sludge, does significant damage, plus the additional Poison damage, although Poison only does 1 16th in Generation 1, and if you knock out a Pokemon, you don't take Poison damage, so it's far more forgiving than in later generations. Of course, if it attacks again, I'm going to lose, but I get a critical hit and win. So yeah, this was a lucky battle for sure, but hey, I did win. I have battled five times, I won three, not a bad percentage. And after we beat Koga, we can head to Sylph Company and battle rival Fievel. Now, I don't know if I outspeed Pidgeot, I probably do, but it goes for quick attack, does barely anything. Thunderbolt's a one in KO, so that's cool. Growlithe is also still a one in KO with Thunderbolt, not bad either. I was pretty worried about Execute, it can be incredibly trolly, but Drill Pick is still a one-hit KO, so that's a good sign. It is not a one-hit KO, however, against Alakazam. Thankfully, it goes for Recover. It was nearly a one-hit KO, so clearly the next Drill Pick knocks out Alakazam. And Thunderbolt obviously knocked out Blastoise in one hit. And this is a pretty good time to mention why I had the rival pick Squirtle. While having Squirtle in all three runs is nice for a direct comparison, the real reason was because of the other Pokemon the rival now has, or to be even more accurate, the ones they're going to evolve into. If the rival doesn't have Blastoise, he's going to have a Gyarados, and that's an automatic one in KO. I foresaw Executor and Arcanine being more difficult, plus the other two starters, Charizard and Venusaur, both wouldn't have fared much better. It would have been a one in KO against Charizard, definitely. 
Venusaur may have survived a drill peck, but it wouldn't have been able to really attack me with anything that useful. So, in the end, Zapdos is just super good against all three starters, and for now, has been super good against the rival, but Giovanni did prove to be pretty difficult in the Rocket Hideout. How will he fare against Sylph Company? I'm actually gonna have to narrate this battle because this could be one that's pretty difficult. And already, it's not looking amazing. Thunderbolt is not a 1-8 KO against Nidorino, goes for focus energy, so I wasn't really worried about being attacked unless I got poisoned or something, but not being a 1-8 KO, that's not a great sign. Surprisingly though, Kangaskhan is a 1-8 KO with Thunderbolt. I guess Kangaskhan has much lower special than I thought. Rhyhorn, however, is far better at tanking drill packs. That does what? Maybe an eighth or something? It goes for Tail Whip, which will slightly boost the attack of Drill Peck, but is actually kind of bad because HP is something I really need. I keep going for Drill Peck, misses with a Tail Whip, go for another Drill Peck, it hits with Thorn Attack, but gets a critical hit. So that actually does more damage, but it ignores the drop to my defense. So I guess, all right. Another Drill Peck, and this time it goes for Stomp. You can see how much damage that's doing. That's why Tail Whip was so bad, but thankfully I'm finally able to knock it out. Needle Queen, however, it could be bad. It does have Body Slam. Ugh. Drill Peck only does around a third. Thankfully, goes for Scratch. That's still doing pretty decent damage. Obviously, Drill Peck again. Goes for Poison Sting, and I get poisoned. Thankfully, it didn't go for Body Slam. If it did, I would have lost, but that is Pokemon Generation 1 for you. AI doesn't always make the smartest decisions, and we are able to beat Giovanni first try. But once again, these rock ground Pokemon really are not being kind to us. However, the next two gym leaders aren't going to be using that. In terms of which one to do next, I don't think Sabrina should be too difficult, but I'm not completely sure. Either way, that's what I decided to do, and here's how the battle went. First question is whether I outspeed her Kadabra. I do. And Drill Peck is a 1 KO, so that's a very solid start to the battle. Now, against Mr. Mime, I go for Drill Peck because Mr. Mime is bad defense, get a critical hit. The crit mattered, it wouldn't have been a 1 KO otherwise, but Mr. Mime doesn't really do anything. It's probably just going to go for Barrier, Reflect, or Light Screen, none of which matter. And even if it goes for Confusion, wouldn't have been a big difference, but whatever. Unsurprisingly, Venomoth is weak to flying, so Drill Peck is a 1 KO. And now we have Alakazam. Do I outspeed? Will it be a 1 KO? Well, it goes for Psy Wave and misses, so that's a no. And Drill Peck does more than half, but it's not a 1-8 KO, so that's another no. But then Alakazam goes for Psy Beam, and not only is it a critical hit, but it confuses me, and I hit myself in confusion. Do you want to know the percent chance of that happening? Try 1.17, and if it hits me again with Psy Beam, I might lose this battle. Fantastic. Well, look at that. It does go for Psy Beam, but turns out my math was a little off. I still survive on a fair bit of health, considering and I don't hit myself in confusion, knock it out with Drill Peck. Scarier than it should have been at the end, but we win nonetheless. But now we're able to go down to Cinnabar and battle Blaine. One thing I do want to quickly mention as we get to Blaine is remember after we beat Blaine with Moltres, we got access to Fire Blast. And with Articuno, although I didn't use it yet, we did have Blizzard by this point. Zapdos will not be using Thunder. Not only as it is a 70% accuracy move, it wouldn't be viable, but to get the TM, I'd have to go all the way to the power plant, and that would waste a ton of time. And we're actually making pretty good time, but because I'm doing everything in a different order, I'll give you a time update after Giovanni. Now, this wasn't my first battle versus Blaine because I tried out a couple different strategies to see which worked best, and this is the one I chose. Against Growlithe, I used Thunderbolt. It's about a 50-50 chance whether it's a 1 KO, and I get the 1 KO, which is nice. I go for Thunderbolt again against Ponyta, I think there was a slim chance it could have been a 1 KO, but the crit definitely mattered. And honestly, the biggest reason this matters is that if Ponyta uses Fire Spin and gets a 5 turn Fire Spin, it wastes a ton of time and we're trying to go fast ish. Speaking of Fire Spin, I go for Thunderbolt. Obviously, it's not a 1 KO against Rapidash. It goes for Fire Spin and misses. Yay! Not just happening to me anymore. And I knock it out with Thunderbolt. Now all we have is Arcanine, but Fire Blast is always going to be scary. Really don't want to see that. Well, I outspeed our canine, and that's super cool that I'm outspeeding everything. Get the critical hit, which is even cooler. Goes for takedown, which is perfect. And I knock it out with Thunderbolt. 
Obviously, there were some good things that happened in this battle, but overall, I don't anticipate Blaine being too difficult unless you get a lot of bad luck. Someone I do anticipate being incredibly difficult is Giovanni. We have both a Rhyhorn and a Rhydon, plus a Nidoking and Nidoqueen. We have to rely on Drill Peck, probably? No, we're not going to rely on Drill Peck. At least not for all of them. We're going to teach Mimic. I bought the Pokedoll earlier, and we're going to use Mimic to make this battle a little bit easier. It's still not going to be easy, but easier. All right, so once again, Giovanni leads off with Rhyhorn. The idea is use Drill Peck and hope it doesn't do too much damage. Drill Peck does barely anything. Stomp does just over 20 HP. So that's not too bad, but it'll add up if it keeps using Stomp. Turn two, another Drill Peck for me. Another Stomp from Rhyhorn, that's not great. Turn three, Drill Peck from me. Guard Spec from Giovanni, that's pretty good. Turn four, Drill Peck from me. Tail Whip from Rhyhorn, that's awful. We're actually gonna need to tank a few attacks. We really don't want our defense lowered. Turn 5, another Drill Peck, and this time Rhyhorn misses with Tail Whip. Yeah, there's a 25% chance that the AI, when they use status moves against you, can fail. It's very strange. And that's not a glitch, in case you were wondering. That's in Generation 2 as well. That was an intentional design choice by Game Freak. Anyway, 6 Drill Peck knocks out Rhyhorn, and here is where Mimic's going to come into play. But I'm going to need Mr. Doug Trio to play nice with me. I'm gonna Mimic Dig, it's 100 base power and super effective against all of Giovanni's remaining Pokemon. Now, all I don't want to see is Sand Attack. And there was a 25% chance it failed, of course it didn't. And now I need to hit because Slash will do a ton of damage. I go for Drill Peck since it's quicker and I knock out Doug Trio. Now I wanna know how much Dig will do. Will it wanna KO any of these Pokemon? Let's find out. So I go for Dig, it obviously misses with Scratch. I hit with Dig and it's doing, I don't know, seven eighths or something. There's not a lot of HP left for Nidoqueen. It goes for Tail Whip, which would have been bad, but it fails and I go for Drill Peck. Thankfully I don't miss and that's Nidoqueen down. I go for Dig, Nidoking goes for Horn Attack. That's good, go for that again. I miss with Dig and it goes for Thrash. That's bad, that's a ton of damage. One more will come very close if not knock me out. But thankfully, I'm going for Dig. It should miss and then confuse itself, but of course, Giovanni can interrupt it to use a guard spec. Uh, that's like the only time that's bad. Just use one again. Come on, I hit with Dig, not a 1 KO, and of course, no guard spec, but I survive on 1 HP. All right, well, now I just need no more misses. <laughs> Once again, I choose Drill Peck to finish it off, and it hits again. All right. It looks bad, but three of Rhyhorn's moves do nothing. Two one KO moves, which won't work because I have speed, and Tail Whip, which doesn't matter. As long as it doesn't use Stomp and I don't miss too much, I could still win here. All right, I go for Dig. I hit. It goes for Tail Whip. Perfect. Looking like Dig's going to be a three a KO, by the way, so I go for Dig again. Dodge a Stomp while underground, and I hit again. Not bad. And Giovanni goes for a guard spec, so as long as I don't miss, I will win at 1 HP. That's just amazing. All right, so I go for Dig. I miss. And Stomp. Uh, I haven't lost to Giovanni in a really long time. That's disappointing. But it happens. Let's battle him again. If I don't get hit with Sand Attack, it should be fine, right? In the battle immediately following this loss, I am able to knock out Rhyhorn at 90 HP. And after I mimic Dig, Dugtrio goes for Slash, which will always critical hit and leaves me at just 50 HP, which is very, very bad. But wait, it gets worse. After I hit Nidoqueen with Dig, obviously can't get a critical hit. Hits with Poison Sting, which would be good if it didn't poison me. Since Dig is a two-turn attack, I'm going to be losing some more HP every single turn. Now, you'd figure that I'm going to lose to Nidoking, but I actually do get the critical hit. But it's all for naught, I actually cannot mathematically defeat Rhydon since I'm going to lose a 16th of my remaining health the turn I go for Dig, the turn I hit with Dig, and then the next turn I go for Dig. And even if I get a critical hit, it will never be a one-hit KO. So that's two losses in a row to Giovanni. Can we make it three? Well, the Rhyhorn section sure goes differently. Rhyhorn does not attack me a single time, but hits me with not one, not two, but three. Three tail whips! <laughs> yeah, I had to throw that in there somewhere. But no, seriously, I couldn't believe it. At least I haven't lost any HP, but if I do get hit with an attack, it's going to be doing a ton of damage. However, one thing that it won't affect is after I mimic dig, I get hit by slash. Again, 
critical hits ignore my defensive drop, which leads to this absurd circumstance where a critical hit is actually worse than not getting a critical hit in this instance. I knock out Dugtrio with Drill Peck, but while it didn't help Dugtrio, it definitely could help me. Critical hits would be nice. Well, I go for Dig, and after I hit, Giovanni uses Guard Spec. So not a critical hit, but honestly just as good. Knock it out with a Drill Peck. Now, Giovanni smartly uses his Guard Spec as I'm digging. I mean, I know it's just random, but I'm going to pretend it was a smart move. I get the critical hit, however, and... Okay, I mean, it's a 75% chance Rhydon uses a move that is useless. I should win, right? Okay, let's do it. I hit with Dig, and it goes for Stomp, and... Oh my god, again with the 1 HP. Wow. <laughs> but like, can you just not use Stomp? Holy moly. Okay, let's go for Dig again. A critical hit would be nice. Okay, no, but it does go for Horn Drill, so as long as I don't get the 1 in 256 chance of missing... I will beat Giovanni, which usually is not something to celebrate, but will be right now. And hooray! I don't get the dreaded Generation 1 miss. And finally, on my third attempt, I have beaten all 8 gym leaders with just a Zapdos. Most of them were pretty easy. I expected Giovanni to be tricky. And as I head to rival number 6, let's take a look at how this run compares to the other two legendary birds and even to Mewtwo, since that's always fun. Well, Mewtwo made it here at 2 hours 33 minutes, which was insane. Moltres was nearly 50 minutes slower at 3 hours and 19 minutes. Articuno was much better, being only 15 minutes behind Mewtwo at 2 hours and 48 minutes. And the moment of truth, Zapdos? 2 hours and 51 minutes? Holy moly! Zapdos has managed to narrow the lead to just three minutes, which is crazy when you consider just how much longer it took to get past Brock. However, it is the next six battles that are truly going to determine if Zapdos is up to Articuno's level, or hey, could it even be possible it's better? No way, right? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We still have a potentially tricky battle here. Let's talk about it. Like always, Rival 6 leads off with Pidgeot. I go for Thunderbolt. Don't think the critical hit mattered, and bye-bye Pidgeot. Now, just in case you haven't seen enough of this Pokemon, another Rhyhorn, hooray. Once again, it would be a six-hit KO, but after I use Drill Peck enough times, I do get one critical hit. It is a one in five chance. Unfortunately, this Rhyhorn has Fury Attack, which I'd love to miss, because when it hits, it takes a long time. It's one of the longer attacks, and it uses it twice for a total of five hits with it. So definitely a slower Rhyhorn than I'd like. But to be honest, at this point, I'm just happy to knock it out. And here's another Pokemon we've seen a ton of, Growlithe. I get a critical hit against it, so I'm not sure if it would have knocked it out otherwise. And Execute, I thought would be a 1 KO with Drill Peck. It was not. It may have been a range. And had it used Stun Spore, I still would get paralyzed. The way it works in Generation 1 is you cannot be statused by moves of your type. But moves like Stun Spore or Glare can still paralyze me. Leech Seed isn't great, but I'll take it. This I won't take, however. Alakazam not only outspeeds me, it goes for Psychic, and I get a Special Drop, which is very bad, because not only can it knock me out if it attacks at all, but I might not even be able to 1 KO Blastoise, which has Hydro Pump. Thankfully, Alakazam decides to go for Reflect. That's pretty much the only move it could have used where I wouldn't have lost there, but... Now this whole battle depends on whether or not Thunderbolt, even with that special drop, is a 1-hit KO. I go for Thunderbolt, it's not. In fact, I don't think the special drop mattered, I think it wouldn't have been a 1-hit KO anyway, but Blastoise decides to go for Skull Bash, okay. I mean, I guess it could have also gone for Withdraw. Maybe I was being a little dramatic, we win, but yeah, that is definitely a very difficult battle. And so, while it might have taken the rival six tries to get it right, finally, his team is starting to look pretty scary. And I'm definitely going to need to come up with a bit of a better strategy if I want to beat him as champion. But who the heck is thinking about the champion yet? We still have the Elite Four to get through. There's no point hyping them up anymore. Let's talk about my first battle with Laura Lee at level 43. Alright, so the first Pokemon is Dugong, which does no Aurora Beam, but don't have to worry about that because I get a critical hit and knock it out. Pretty sure it wouldn't have been a 1-hit KO otherwise, so that was some pretty good luck. 
Cloyster has much lower special, so I expect it to be a 1 KO, and it in fact was. No critical hit needed. Two Pokemon down. Next, if you saw the Articuno video, you know exactly what's going to happen here. I'm going to mimic Amnesia. Use three Amnesias. I'm not sure if two or three, but just to be safe, I'm going to use three. And then I'm going to use Thunderbolt against Slowbro. Jinx. And I get a critical hit. So here's where critical hits suck. Thankfully, Jinx doesn't get a critical hit or a freeze, which would have been very bad. But now it doesn't matter. I'm going to knock out Jinx and Lapras regardless. Thank goodness Amnesia covers both offense and defense because otherwise, Ice Punch would have done quite a bit of damage. Overall though, pretty average luck. Not too bad. And now we get to face off against Bruno. Typically not too difficult. I mean, the movesets are really bad, but... We do have to face two Onyx, so I'm a little nervous, but come on, it's Bruno, it's gonna be fine. So Onyx doesn't have really any useful moves to mimic, so I'm just gonna go for Drill Peck. Unfortunately, Bruno does use X Defend, which is gonna make this a little bit harder. I go for Drill Peck again, and it goes for Rock Throw, and wow, that's doing quite a bit more damage. I mean, it's only 60% accurate, but 40 damage? That means I can't tank many more of those. Hopefully, it'll start to use Rage. I go for another Drill Peck, and yes, it does go for Rage. Bruno now can only use Rage or items for the rest of the battle, which is good, because Rock Throw obviously wasn't a great attack. However, the one caveat is every time I hit Onyx, its attack is going to go up and up and up. And obviously, it's going to start to do more damage, so critical hits are essential. Unfortunately, I can't seem to get any critical hits. Rage is doing more and more damage, and yeah, wow, 20% chance, but only one critical hit right at the beginning against Onyx. And I have just 28 HP to go. I should be fine, because Hitmonchan really only knows special moves that shouldn't do too, too much damage. But I do plan on mimicking Ice Punch for the second Onyx, and if I'm able to get that off, I should be fine, and this battle should be easy. Well, here's something I really don't understand what happened. Mimic failed. Is it because it missed, or is it because Hitmonchan used counter, and Mimic is classified as a normal move? I have no idea. I've literally never seen Mimic fail before. Weird. Let's try that again. Alright, so I Mimic Ice Punch. You can see Hitmonchan's moves. Just don't use Ice Punch, and... Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god! <laughs> Mark it down. July of 2020. I lost to Bruno in a bat. Oh my, wow. Wow. I mean, there was some bad luck for sure, but like, I, I can't believe it. That's, that's great. I, I, <laughs> I can't believe it. Okay, let's try this again and wow. All right, so I'm gonna do pretty much the exact same thing as the first battle. In fact, I even get the critical hit against Dugong. Cloyster's a one at KO. I use three Amnesias. Knockout Slowbro. I don't get the critical hit against Jinx, so this should in fact be damageless. And like you saw in the first battle, critical hit doesn't matter. I don't get one anyway. And that's Laurelie. So let's face Bruno again. We're probably going to get a critical hit or something, so I'm not super worried. That was still... I can't believe I lost to Bruno. Wow. But yeah, that was a one-time occurrence for sure. All right, so the battle starts out the exact same way. Drill Peck, X Defend. Second Drill Peck, now Slam. That's better than Rock Throw for sure. On turn three, though, after I use Drill Peck, he uses another X Defend. So I'm going to really, really need a critical hit here. Well, don't get one turn four, and now Bruno's going to use Rage. So even though it's normally a terrible attack, if I don't get any critical hits, I do lose a ton of HP here. All right, so it's a one in five chance. So one, nope. Two, nope. Three, nope. Four? Nope. Five? Nope. Six? Nope. Okay, my voice can't go any higher, but seven, eight, and nine hits. No, no, and no. I'm at 10 HP. So I'm actually going to need to get lucky to win. Holy moly, am I going to lose to Bruno twice? Well, maybe I could mimic high jump kick for Hitmonlee, so I'm going to use Drill Peck, and it's not a 1 to KO against Hitmonchan. Oh my gosh. Thankfully, he uses an X defense, so that's good. But then I think about it, I'm like, I'm at 10 HP, I'm gonna need to use Ice Punch if I have any chance of beating the second Onyx without taking damage. And Thunder Punch, a terrible special attack, knocks me out. Two losses to Bruno that were not my fault. I'm not trying to make things more difficult on myself. What? What's going... I... I... Okay. 
This has gone from funny to genuinely concerning, but I'm not getting any critical hits against the Onyx. I just think I need one or so, and we should be good. So I'm going to do the Laurelie fight once again. I don't really need to commentate because you've already seen it. The only difference is that Dugong does use Aurora Beam, as you saw at the beginning. It does significant damage, but that's the last time I should take much damage. Slowbro also uses Water Gun, but Water Gun is a very weak attack. But otherwise, a pretty standard Laurelie battle. And let's go... Please, can we get 20% chance? Not like I'm asking for a critical at every turn. Just a couple or one after he uses X defense. Well, turn one, no critical hit. Harden. So not an X defense, but the same thing. Turn two and rage. Okay, not the worst thing as long as I get those critical hits, though. Now on turn three, I do something weird, but I know in generation one, sometimes status moves ignore type effectiveness. So I'm like, will Thunder Wave paralyze an Onyx? No, as I expect, it won't. Rage isn't very powerful at this point, so it only costs like five or so HP to test that out. So I thought might as well. And then as if they said, wow, what a poor move choice. I get my critical hit. I still need a few more if I want to win though. Especially after Onyx uses an X defend. Well, thankfully later on, I do get one more critical hit, but because of all those defense boosts, Onyx is still doing significant damage and while I do make it to Hitmonchan at better HP, 64 isn't great, especially if I get hit by Ice Punch, but I should be fine. So I Mimic Ice Punch, X Defend, perfect. I'm hoping Thunderbolt will 1 KO, it does, great. Hitmonlee, I'm not as worried about, but a 1 KO is always appreciated. I am certain Ice Punch will 1 KO Onyx. The thought of Zapdos punching something, I guess with its wing, I don't really know. Who cares, Onyx is done. And now I just need, well, honestly, I'm not too worried about Machamp because Submission is resisted. I know it's going to be a 2 KO anyway, so I go for Thunderbolt. Why not? Maybe I'll get the Paralysis. X Defend, so can't go for Drill Peck now anyway. Thunderbolt is a 2 KO. And hooray, we've beaten Bruno. I never said that sentence. No Count Von Count impression this run. Bruno is legit difficult for Zapdos. Holy moly. But... In a regular run, it is the next battle, Agatha, which is tricky. Thankfully, I did have an idea how I wanted to face her. So the first question is, will the first Gengar outspeed me? It does and goes for hypnosis, darn it. But I wake up immediately, that's great. And here I get flustered. Gengar goes for Nightshade, I go for Drill Peck. That actually is not what I want to do. You'll see this turn what I want to do. Gengar goes for Dream Eater, I go for Thunder Wave. This is key, because now I outspeed if Gengar switches out or something, and it has a 25% chance of not moving. Super, super useful. Well, now that I outspeed, I effectively get to attack twice in a row. Drill Peck comes oh so close to knocking out Gengar. Thankfully, Agatha goes for Super Potion, and so the third Drill Peck knocks it out. I've lost 56 HP, but this is looking okay. Golbat, I expect to outspeed and it to be a 1 KO with Thunderbolt. Both those things occur, very good. Now, I do expect to outspeed Haunter, so I just go for Drill Peck, hoping it'll somehow be a 1 KO, it's not. Thankfully, Haunter goes for Dream Eater, that is the best move it could've used by far. Now I knock it out with Drill Peck, great. Will Arbok be a 1 KO with Thunderbolt, or it could use Glare? Well, I go for Thunderbolt, and she switches into Gengar. Okay, I'll take that all day, every day. So now, all I don't wanna see is Confuse Ray, which of course is what I get. Thankfully, I don't hit myself in Confusion, and I'm able to paralyze Gengar. I go for Drill Peck. I know it's going to be a 3 KO. It goes for Toxic and hits. Not great, but consider that two Nightshades would knock me out, so it actually is kind of better than that. Well, I haven't snapped out of Confusion yet, but I haven't hit myself in Confusion. Hoped for a clutch critical hit. Don't get it, but Agatha once again uses a Super Potion. Looking pretty good. And I'm able to knock out Gengar with one more Drill Peck, and the fight is over. I mean, yeah, Arbok is still around, but I'm going to outspeed. Any one of my attacks will knock it out. I use Thunderbolt, and that was relatively okay. I mean, sure, there's always going to be a lottery element, but now all I have to do is worry about Lance and the champion. And although against Lance, I wouldn't say the matchup is amazing, Thunderbolt will deal with Gyarados pretty quickly. I think it'll be an okay matchup. I should be able to get to the champion so long as I don't make a massive mistake. Oh my god, I forgot to use an elixir. No. I don't even have enough attacking moves to win. 
Sadly, I don't even realize it, and I mimic agility both for the badge boost glitch and to outspeed Aerodactyl since it's very speedy, but it doesn't matter. I literally have one more power point of Thunderbolt and two more of Drill Peck. At least they can show off how much agility will do, but after all this work, a simple just going too fast, man. I mean, it's after the fact now, but I was so, so angry. Because Bruno turns out to be a little lucky, and we know Agatha's a lottery. And how long will it take for me to get back to Lance? Well, not the next run. I lose to Bruno again. This time I lose to Onyx, a critical hit rock throw, and then another rock throw. Three losses to Bruno. I have no more words. Anyway, the video is getting long, so I'm just going to skip ahead to Lance. I'm not yet sure how this battle is going to look because I reset pretty early, but I'm optimistic. No more mental mistakes. Let's do this. Now, I didn't know that I would outspeed Gyarados. I'm very happy I do. And of course, it's a 1-8 KO with Thunderbolt, quadruple super effective. As you saw, I'm going to mimic agility and use three. However, I am a little nervous about taking back too much damage. So I get a Dragon Rage, a miss with Hyper Beam, another Dragon Rage, and a slam. That leaves me with 63 HP for the rest of Lance's Pokemon. I'm hoping that's enough, but Dragonite will probably not be a 1-8 -a KO. That could be bad. Speaking of which, even with those badge boosts, Dragonair is not a 1-8 -a KO. Thankfully, it goes for agility, and that's Dragonair 1 down. Can Dragonair 2 go for agility? Drill Peck? Nope, Dragon Rage. That's, I guess, better than Hyper Beam, but now I cannot be hit again. That's not great. Obviously, I'm going to outspeed Aerodactyl, and I go for Thunderbolt, but... Just use Agility or Barrier, Dragonite. I can't have you attacking me. Also, not leveling up would have been nice. So now those extra boosts go away. And wow, Thunderbolt is a three-hit KO. Thank gosh it misses with Slam. Ignore that not very effective. That's a bug in Generation 1. It's just doing neutral damage. All right, now I need you to use Agility or Barrier. Great. Agility. Perfect. I have beaten Lance. Clearly, I needed some good luck there. That slam miss was only a 20% chance, but okay. You know what? We didn't use the rare candies. We've made it to the champion. We've beaten him six times. We know what to expect. Cue the Marnie theme, because this is it. We're going to beat him. We're going to beat the game at level 50 for just the second time. Who would have thunk it? Okay, so Pidgeot leads off. I outspeed. That's good. Knock it out with Thunderbolt. Now for Alakazam, I know it's going to outspeed. It goes for Psychic. Thank goodness, no special drop. I'm going to go for Thunder Wave, similar to Gengar. It seems like it wastes a turn, but it really doesn't because now I attack first. And once I knock it out, it can't attack, right? So I'm finding that it's paying off. Now I would like to mimic Recover or Psychic for Rhydon, but I can't risk it. I go for Drill Peck. It's not a 1 KO, but Paralyze. See, told you it pays off. Knock out Alakazam. I was super nervous about that, but to be completely honest, Rhydon is funny enough going to be one of the scarier Pokemon I have to face. And I kind of opt for a Hail Mary strategy. I'm going to mimic Horn Drill. So 30% accuracy, but think about how many Drill Pecks it would take to knock this thing out. Honestly, it's less luck than relying on critical hits. Let's do it. Rhydon goes for Fury Attack. It takes even longer now that animations play, which by the way are on by default in the champion battle. I cannot turn them off. And now I miss with Horn Drill. Thankfully, miss with Tail Whip. Can it hit now? Oh, yeah, it can. Wow. Okay. Totally worth mimicking Horn Drill. Down goes right on. And while I can't declare victory yet, it's getting oh so close. All right. For Arcanine, I go for Thunderbolt, thinking it might be a 2 KO. Looks like it'll be about that. It goes for Leer. That boosts my special just a little bit, so this should knock it out. If I don't get a 1 in 256 miss chance, oh my god, thank goodness it goes for Roar. Come on! Alright, well for good measure I get that critical hit. I don't think it would have mattered, but whatever. We have two more Pokemon left. I have super effective moves against both. Just don't put me to sleep and we should be done. Hey, a critical hit wouldn't be bad either. Don't get the critical hit? No. Alright, alright, just wake up here. Oh, it's asleep. Oh my god, wow. Okay, I think we're done. It doesn't matter. Maybe miss with Barrage. Well, I don't wake up and not only does it go for Barrage, but it hits and yeah, that's it. So close. We were one Drill Peck away from winning, maybe. I don't know if Blastoise would have been a lot of KO. 
And I know you guys are curious to find out, but I have some bad news. It just wasn't working. I would do these battles again and again, and I kept losing. And it was coming to the point where I was starting to question why I was so adamant to do this starting at level 43. I had the rare candies. And then I thought about why I do these challenges, and it's about consistency. I could always do these at lower levels, but I want the strategies to be ones that I can replicate, not ones that require all these crazy things to happen. And if I start to lose again and again and again, I mean, think about Lance. That ending with Lance was not something that should have happened. I mean, the whole Lance battle, in fact. The fact I got a miss with Hyper Beam, the second Dragoner doesn't use Hyper Beam. Just so much stuff happened in that battle. So, after using the rare candies, I'm at level 50. Obviously, the battles are going to look quite a bit different now. So, let's look at the new and improved Loralee battle. Well, remember how we needed a critical hit against Dugong? Yeah, we don't need that anymore. Thunderbolt's a 1 KO. Obviously, Cloyster is still going to be a 1 KO. And I decide, you know what? Can we do this without Mimic? I don't know. Let's find out. Slowbro's a 1 KO. That's a good start. Now, Drill Peck comes oh so close to knocking Jinx out. Thankfully, it puts it in range for Loralee to use a Super Potion, so Jinx never attacks. And now, will Lapras be a one hit KO? No, it's close, but it wasn't either. Thankfully, once again, we get the Super Potion. So, in retrospect, probably should have used an Amnesia, but hey, can't argue with results. No damage, victory, but what's Bruno gonna look like? Bruno was oddly very difficult, especially the first Onyx, before using the rare candies, I mean. But when you level up seven times, your attack, defense, and HP are all a lot higher. And well, let's just take a look how much of a difference it's gonna make. Well, obviously against Onyx 1, I go for Drill Peck. Doesn't look like it's doing too much more damage, but Slam is doing way less damage to me, which is huge. However, after that second Drill Peck, it's clear I am actually doing a lot more damage than I was before. And the other thing about Slam Turn 1 is he didn't use an X Defend, which he does use here, but that allowed me to knock it down to what? Two thirds health? That's pretty good. Well, the third Drill Peck takes it to just about half, and now Bruno starts to use Rage. Critical hit would be pretty nice. Well, don't get it on my first try, nor on my second, but I do on my third. And look at that. We've made it past Onyx number one with just one critical hit, which considering how many times they attacked is about average luck, and we're at 143 HP. This is going to be a cakewalk. And this part's going to go exactly as you've seen before. Just don't get frozen. Okay, thank goodness. Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt, Ice Punch. How much is Thunderbolt going to do to Machamp? I don't know, more than half, whatever. Goes for Fissure. Yeah, that's going to work. For those who don't know, Fissure is a ground move, I'm a flying type, it literally can't affect me for multiple reasons. Bruno finally becomes Bruno once again, order has been restored, and if that's not an indication I was at too low a level, I don't know what is. But now that I'm looking ahead to Agatha, I wonder whether these increase in levels are going to allow me to outspeed her Gengar, at least one of them. Let's take a look. Well, I predicted that I would outspeed, so I go for Drill Peck as opposed to Thunder Wave. I do outspeed, I'm doing over half, both great things. Agatha swaps into Golbat. This is awesome. Obviously, at seven levels higher, I knock out Golbat again with Thunderbolt. She swaps back into Gengar, and I knock it out with Drill Peck. Now, here's the crazy thing Haunter might be a 1 KO, and it is so close, thankfully, in range for Super Potion. Knock it out the very next turn. That may have been a range. Wow, this is going super, super well. All right, well, how much damage will we do to Arbok? No idea. I got a critical hit, but not going to complain. That's the best case scenario. And now I have to decide whether I go for Thunder Wave or do I go for Drill Peck and risk being outsped. Well, even though I hadn't done the calculations, I predict correctly I would get outsped. I go for Thunder Wave. Didn't matter. Gengar used Confuse Ray and I hit myself in Confusion. I would be angrier, but I'm at full health. So, so far the battle's gone great. All right, let's try that again. It goes for Toxic, and I hit myself in Confusion. Now it's getting a little scary. Toxic and Confusion's not a great combo. And when you add a Nightshade to the mix, we're going into I might lose this battle territory because after Toxic damage, I will have less than 60 HP. Awesome. Thankfully, I finally hit with Thunder Wave, and I don't even snap out of Confusion. Critical hit, no, no critical hit, but yes. It's still paralyzed, and yeah, that mattered. Toxic is racking up. I need to win this turn. I'm not actually worried about confusion. I believe the way it works is on turn five, which is the maximum, you'll always snap out before, which I do. Now I just need the range. I get it. 
Perfect. Great luck for the first four Pokemon. Awful luck the last Pokemon. And it just goes to show you how much of a lottery Agatha is. But as we saw in the previous run, Lance was super, super difficult. And I needed insane luck to get by him. I'm hoping these seven levels really take the luck factor out of it. But like the old saying goes, can't know until you try. Let's try and defeat Lance. All right, well, we know the start's gonna be easy. Thunderbolt, I still outspeed, knockout Gyarados, perfect. And it actually gets better, I just level up, meaning the extra boosts I get from agility and all my other stats are gonna persist probably throughout this entire battle, which is excellent. All right, so I mimic agility and I get a miss with slam, use agility, hyper beam, recharge turn, and agility. So I got pretty good luck from Dragonair. The question is, will Drill Pick knock it out? The answer is no, it's not even a range, and Lance has a Hyper Potion, so it's essentially a wash. I use Drill Peck again, and it goes for Hyper Beam. Like I said, my stats are all increased a little bit by using Agility, due to the Badge Boost feature, we're gonna call it now, and I knock out Dragonair number one. Now, here's where I get creative. I don't want Lance to use a Hyper Potion, so I'm gonna go for Thunderbolt, since that will not put it within range, even with the critical hit, which I just get, and it goes for Agility, perfect. Making sure Pokemon aren't in range to healing isn't as big a deal in Generation 1 as it is in later generations, but in future runs that I'm doing in later generations, you're going to see a lot more of this. Aerodactyl, obviously I'm going to outspeed it's a 1 KO, and now I'm hoping Dragonite will be a 2 KO. I get a critical hit, so I don't know how much it would have done either way, and it goes for Hyper Beam, and whoa, okay, that did a little bit more damage than I thought it would. Turns out this was not a safe battle whatsoever, but I do win on my first try. Now, to be fair, it is only a 1 in 3 chance Lance uses Hyper Beam, and it should be a 2 a KO with Thunderbolt, but had Dragonair not gone for agility twice, eh, I would have lost, and uh, that wouldn't be good, but I didn't. And we're back at the champion. Honestly, there were things about that battle I really didn't like, and hopefully now that I'm at a higher level and have thought about it a bit more, I can make the battle go better, but will it be enough to actually beat the champion? Let's find out. All right, so the beginning, like always, is anticlimactic. Thunderbolt, I outspeed, knock out Pidgeot, of course, but I'm not sure if I'll outspeed Alakazam, probably not, but I don't want to go for Horn Drill. I want to use Recover. There's just so many more uses for it. I'm going to do it. Thankfully, Gen 1 AI is terrible, even in the final battle, and we get a full health Recover. So far, so good. All right, so Alakazam's gonna outspeed. It goes for Psybeam, no confusion. I don't get confused. And once again, might as well go for Thunder Wave. I think Drill Peck would be a 1 KO anyway, but better safe than sorry. And turns out it was good to be safe because Drill Peck was not a 1 KO. Alakazam uses Recover, but the next Drill Peck does knock it out. And that is one of the scariest Pokemon down. Arguably, Rhydon is about as scary, but with Recover, it shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully, although Horn Drill was kind of nice. And yeah, you can see there just how useful Horn Drill was. I'm doing like no damage, seven levels higher. Rhydon goes for Horn Drill, which cannot hit me because I outspeed. I go for Drill Peck again. It goes for Fury Attack. Less attacks mean faster, which is good. Only three, that's okay. And now I can speed it up a little bit. Essentially, what I want to have happen here is to get critical hits, no leers or tail whips. That would actually be pretty bad, even though it would raise my attack a little bit. I would get my defense lowered, and it's going to happen, but I do have Recover. Now, thankfully, Rhydon really doesn't attack me too, too much. I do use Recover towards the end in order to have more HP for the last few opponents, especially Arcanine, which has Takedown. He uses Fury Attack right after, which is unfortunate, but I do have 143 HP with some defense drops. That's not great, but it's what we have. So the big thing here is no takedown. It may knock me out. I go for Thunderbolt. I get the paralysis and it's paralyzed. Okay, that is good. So I can knock it out the next turn, but we can still be put to sleep. And you saw how that went. So critical hit, no barrage. Perfect. I'd like it to miss, but I will take the time loss. Now, as long as this is a 1 KO against Blastoise, we win. Will it be a 1 KO? It all comes down to this because Blastoise has Blizzard. Is this it? The final turn? Yes, it is. I win. Wow. Wow. This was a crazy, crazy run. 
but I don't think we can truly appreciate just how crazy until we see the final time. So here is the tier list plus the legendaries that we have so far. Zapdos is the second fastest Pokemon. That's right. It beat Articuno. Zapdos ended up making up all that time. And so even though I'm at a level higher, I don't think the extra rare candy really made much of a difference. I think we have to put Zapdos ahead of Articuno. But that concludes the red and blue legendary birds. Take care, everyone.